Hi fellow Webflowers, in this Webflow tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Flexbox like a pro. So let's get into it. So here you can see my Flexbox layout. I actually have uh, four boxes and what makes them special is that they behave like they have media queries, um, but they don't have media queries. That's the point. You can see I'm still on the um, desktop breakpoint and they change. So that's what I'm going to show you in this tutorial, um, how to achieve this kind of behavior because it just makes like a perfect boxy layout um, you can enhance your next project with. So let's look how I did it. So you can see um, that here's my flex inner and this is set to display flex, um, align, what's that called? Align stretch and uh, justify center. And I've defined also um, a, a gap for columns and rows with 2.5 EM. And within there, we have like three uh, block elements and the last block element actually um, has two small uh, blocks in it. And yeah, what makes the magic actually is how the children behave. Um, they are set to wrap. And I'm going to show you how the concept of don't wrap and wrap works on a different example before. So um, let's show it here. You can see uh, here that I have a, a couple of boxes and actually I don't know why. It starts with three, it should start with one, but it doesn't matter. And Oh yeah, it's because of that. Okay, so now it starts with one. You can see um, it's also Flexbox. I also have a um, gap here and they are on don't wrap. And you can see I get an overflow by it. And as soon as I put the children on wrap, you can see that it, they get pushed into the next line. So the difference between wrap and don't wrap is that on don't wrap, all children just get forced to be in one row. And if you um, choose wrap, they are allowed to uh, break into a second row or even into a third row, it doesn't matter. So, and you have some more options here. So let's say I justify them center, you can see all get centered or yeah, right aligned or space between or space justified. Was that correct? Oh, space around, okay, sorry. But uh, yeah, you can see uh, what is happening here, <laughs> the visual. Um, uh, result of it, but um, that's actually the basic of uh, children wrap and don't wrap, and that's a pretty mighty thing because you can use them on different. For example, you can use it on block cards, and probably you know that on small desktop screens, three block cards next to each other, they can get pretty narrow, and the content doesn't look good anymore. You can use something like wrap on it, and then there will be only two cards next to each other on a small desktop screen and the third one uh, gets into the third line and gets stretched uh, so to, to be 100% of the width of the, of the container. So that makes better layouts in many cases. And yeah, that's what I did up here. So uh, let's have a closer look. Um, so, on the, so again, um, the children are set to wrap and on the first block, um, the sizing is set to uh, grow if possible. And what makes the magic here is min width and max width. The min width is set to 42 EM and the max width to 45 EM. And let's see it again. So you can see it maybe shrinks a little bit, but it's almost not noticeable, but it also, it doesn't grow. Um, from a larger point. And the second one, actually, here, this one, this is set to min with 16 EM and max with 36 EM. And you can see on this one that it is uh, growing or shrinking um, already much more. You can see it here. And you can also see it when I turn on um, preview mode again. You can see that the second one here in the middle, that this one is shrinking or uh, growing. And so it always tries to fit everything in one row 
as long as possible. And it is not possible anymore when the width of the elements of the children are would get um, below a min width that I defined here. Um, you have to play a little bit around with the values on, until it works on all breakpoints, but you can see the result um, is pretty good. And so the third one, it has a min width of 16 EM and a max width of 100% because I want um, this third block to, yeah, to cover 100% of the width if possible. And or if necessary in this case. And it has a min width of 16 EM. Now it still fits in this um, min width in this 16 EM. So it puts everything into one row. Once we get below this 16 EM, uh, he will push it into the next row. And here he will um, apply the 100% width. So that's what's happening here. And on tablet, let's have a look here. So here on the first box, I have min width 50% and max width 100%. The 50%, they actually, actually they don't do anything on this viewport. Um, they kick in in the uh, next viewport in this uh, mobile landscape, but I've already applied them here. Um, and on the second one, I also have min width 50% and here's no max width anymore applied. Um, but on this one, 100%, yeah. So the second one is actually, yeah, it will, it will it, the minimum will be 50% width. And you can see if I scale uh, up or down, it uh, stays within this 50% uh, rule. And the same 50% rule is um, probably applied here. No, I, I didn't even use it here because, um, yeah, it, anyway, it will take the leftover space because we are above the min width of 16 EM. And so it will go to uh, try to fit 100% of the uh, leftover space. And yeah, so it looks like 50-50. And yeah, one more difference here. Uh, the sizing of this one is set to shrink if needed. So um, you can see if I turn this to something different, uh, the layout probably breaks. Oh no, it still works. So we can take this actually off. And on... Uh, mobile landscape, you can see it changes again. Here, the first one, um, yeah, it, it, it stays the same. It's now on 100% width that is uh, kicking in. And uh, the second one, this now is set to a min width of 100%. So um, both of them are have their own uh, row in this uh, layout. And down here, the last one, um, this, yeah, the max width of 100% kicks in because, uh, yeah, it's, it's growing if it's uh, possible. Here you can see, uh, grow if possible. And the children, the children are actually set to 16 EM. They are already um, have the min width of 16 EM on, on desktop breakpoint. And I didn't change them at all. That's all fine. And yeah, that's, that's the thing with this kind of layout. Um, you can see, I can go in preview mode again to see what's happening. I'm still on the desktop breakpoint, but as soon as we um, get under the value of some um, defined min widths here of uh, one of the flex children, um, they automatically jump into the next row and we are still on desktop breakpoint. No? And if we go down to mobile uh, to, to tablet, you can see now it kicks in the media queries of the tablet breakpoint. Yeah, so th things changed. This one is now has a width of 100% and this one was 50% and this just takes over the, the leftover space and grows to 100% if possible. And this one is shrinking. You can see it is, it is shrinking if necessary. And those two boxes, they don't shrink or a little bit, yeah, but not so much. And then here on um, mobile landscape, there's another media query kicking in. Uh, first and the second box are taking 100% of the width and those uh, two last one, they are sharing uh, the leftover space. And yeah, on mobile, they also 
get into uh, one row. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it and I bring out videos like this frequently. So subscribe to my channel and uh, give the video a like. And if you want to know what class naming strategy I use, you can watch this video here. Thanks for watching. Stay in the flow.